Today we're going to be tasting some delicious cheese and shearing some sheep. It's a lovely morning in the quirky town of Oamaru and we are on a mission. Today we are going to Whitestone Cheese to taste some delicious cheese. Awesome. So this is some of the best cheese in New Zealand that they make right here in Oamaru. So we're both pretty pumped about it, but especially me because I fucking love cheese. As soon as we arrive at Whitestone Cheese, we meet our guide for today who is Pauline, who unsurprisingly is from France. Of course, she loves cheese. So we go into the factory tour where we get to look through different windows into the different stages of the cheese making process. What we're looking at right now is the agitating process of the cheese. So different size agitators create different types of cheese. We also look into the vat section as well, but unfortunately no one's working in that stage today. And then we move on to what is Robin's favorite room, which is the fermentation room, which is filled with rows and rows of blue cheese getting older and smellier. There is a heaps of information panel all around the room, so we could actually do the tour ourselves, but Pauline, which was working at the shop, just offered to guide us around to show us even more than what the signs are actually telling. But the tour finishes with a taster, because of course it finishes with a taster, it's a cheese tour, that's the best thing ever. So Pauline is giving us tasters of a lot of different cheese that they're making right here at Winestone Cheesery. We're tasting some blue cheese, we're tasting some camembert, some creamy brie, some harvard tea, and of course Laura and I are getting ourselves a cheese platter so we can treat ourselves, taste even more cheese, and round up this tour the best way possible. And after tasting almost every single cheese that Whitestone is making, Laura and I are ready to pick our favorites. So out of all the cheese that we've been tasting right now, my favorite was... Vintage Windsor Blue. Creamy Hava Tea. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we stuffed ourselves with cheese, it's time for us to go share the sheep. I'm trying to see if I can get some cheese out of it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can. This afternoon, Laura and I have organized something really special. The owner of the Oamari Backpackers has some family farming in the nearby hills and they are farming sheep for their wool. It's a major industry right here in New Zealand with over six sheep per person in the country. It used to be 20 sheep per person, but the industry has been declining a little bit lately. So as soon as we arrive, we are witnessing a sheep dog rounding up sheep, I think that's the term because those ones are really woolly and they need to be sheared. In the shearing shed, we are meeting Phil, the sheep shearer, as well as our woolly victims of the day. He's gonna be teaching us all about wool first and then we're gonna be trying our hand at sheep shearing. That's gonna be a doozy. So this yeah. one is much denser. So, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you, much denser if you cut that area, like... I had no idea there was so many type of wool. That's your worst wool? Yes. That should be that's your best wool. Look at that, it's so shiny. This is gonna be an icebreaker jumper one day. <laughs> Before, after. <laughs> we are learning so much about sheep shearing thanks to Phil's expertise, and this is really an industry that we had no idea about. Sheep shearing used to be actually one of the most important agricultural industries in New Zealand for about 130 years before dairy took the title in 1987. The sheep are looking pretty nervous in their pens, but Phil assures us that sheep shearing doesn't actually harm the sheep in any way, and we're actually surprised how they react once Phil starts giving us a demonstration of how to shear a sheep. They just completely go limp and lifeless and just let Phil do his thing. And Phil is off like a rocket, completely making this sheep super bald. In fact, they have competitions in New Zealand on who can shear the sheep the fastest. Something tells us that we are not gonna make it look so easy. But anyway, once the sheep is sheared, Phil is putting the sheep into a little runway where it can go out into the field, back outside, and then he gives us a demonstration of what wool looks like once it has been sheared. And with that, now it is our turn. It's 
It's no small feat to go after Phil. He made it look so easy. That was incredible. And he did everything so fast as well. I'm already out of breath just trying to drag that ship out of its pen. And so then after I'm trying to hold on to it so it doesn't wiggle too much, Phil had me putting in the right relaxing position so the ship doesn't mind too much that I'm trying to shear it. Phil is overseeing the entire process but it's really really hard and as soon as I'm done the ship is actually escaping me and try to run away wherever it wants which is obviously not ideal, we want it to go back to its field. After my shearing, Phil is evaluating my wool and actually he's not that happy because I have done so many little strokes, I have cut the wool in so many small pieces that it will not be useful for anything else than a rug. Oh my god, that was a disaster, but I don't do much better because now I'm giving this sheep a box cut rather than making it look like a sheared sheep. It's now sporting a beautiful haircut like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, so I think it's time for Phil to take back the reins and show us what it's like to shear a black wool sheep. So like a pro, he grabs hold of the horns of this ram and pulls it out of its pen, ready for some shearing. We're super surprised at how black that wool is and Phil is even showing how he successfully shears the tail of the sheep as well. And after that it goes back into its pen and now we think it's time for us to have a beer, just like all farmers do at the end of a working day. We're clearly not cut out for sheep shearing but surely we cannot fail at feeding the animals. So that's our next job on the farm this evening as we go to feed the pigs and feed the lambs. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Come on, mate. You can do it. <laughs> oh, there. You do you make an amazing sheep. You're sheepdog. welcome, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> To top up this awesome day, we are having a beer with the guys and we are having an awesome treat. Phil and his wife invite us inside the house for some pavlova, which is the traditional New Zealand dessert. It's the one specialty that you cannot leave New Zealand without trying. It's a meringue cake with heaps of creams and heaps of fruit on top. It is an absolute delight and a perfect end to our lovely day. <laughs> He's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to use that one. Yeah. I think you should. <laughs>